has the Orange Bowl. That's Georgia and uh, Michigan. Georgia and Michigan. That's tonight at seven thirty. Cotton Bowl. That's at three thirty. Alabama and Cincinnati. Cincinnati. And there's one other game on earlier game today. I started out uh, my draft league with New Orleans, and uh, that didn't turn out so well. So. I'm not real big on pro football. It's changed a lot since I was a kid. We, uh, I lived in, live in Birmingham now, but lived in New Orleans for about three years. Right. And like Birmingham, like Alabama has no pro leagues at all, no. pretty much. So well, they're die hard, you know, Alabama. <laughs> I'm a Mississippi State grad, and watching the. Uh, Liberty Bowl was really painful. <laughs> Get the egg bowl over here. Oh, wow. uh, yeah, they, uh, living their cowbells. <laughs> yeah, I got one of my desk at work, and everybody's like, what is that? So, like, Mississippi State beat Auburn this year, and one of our other directors is an Auburn fan. So I had a cowbell, like, engraved with a score from the game on it yeah. and, like, her name on it, and I, like, mailed it to her, and she was so pissed when she got it in the mail. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> She's like, you need to get him under control. Although, what's so funny about Mississippi and, and Mississippi State is you got everybody gets decked out to the nines, you know, all these yuppity uppities at the, on the Grove of Mississippi. All right. And then Mississippi State's just straight cowboy boots and camouflage. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, I grew up like in Ole Miss. Like, Eli Manning was playing like when I was like in high school. So I was like watching him play football. A huge Ole Miss fan, but I went to like campus and I was like, I this is not like where I like this is not my place. So I like, grew up an uh, Alabama fan, and you know the Iron Bowl was always been the epitome of Alabama and Auburn. You know? But I I graduated from Mississippi State too, and it's like I, it's almost like I defected from my family, and they're like, well, why would you do that to us? <laughs> but I even the Egg Bowl, I mean, I don't think it has anything on the Iron Bowl at all. So, no, it's just different. It's a lot different. Ah, uh, you ready? Yeah. Two minutes? Yep, good to go. COVID has ruined so many games this year. Like, half the people, like, 10 players from the Liberty Bowl, I think, for state were out. Oh, uh, yeah. And then. Were they hurt or were they? No, they opted, out? they opted out because of pros. See, I mean, that's the thing about like last year. I think it knocked everybody so out of rhythm that like if you don't, I mean, it's sophomores leaving so early, just and good talent, but just it's just having to leave early, you know. Pro football rhythm and college football. Do now you, even they're trying to pay players again. What do you think that's going to help out at all? Yeah. With keeping? I mean, it's all that's what uh, the transfer portal is also ruining. Yeah, I mean. And with COVID, you don't even have to sit out a year with a transfer portal, so you can just transfer straight to another school now. Well, that's kind of like with uh, Bo Nix after he got hurt in the Mississippi State game. I mean, he was pretty much, you know, after once he got healed, he was gone. And it's just like, I don't feel like there's any dedication anymore to it. It's just whatever well, I think it's going to be coaches, best. If you win the recruiting battle, yeah. you shouldn't have to worry about whether they just leave me now. You can do all this time and calling and visiting talking to mom was to win the recruiting battle and then they just turn around and leave. Well, that's what happened. That's what the big thing between uh, Lane Kiffin and uh, Mike Leach is like Lane Kiffin is such a powerhouse recruiter, you know, and he does a great job, but he pulls so many recruits from the stage and then it's just like Mike Leach can't compete, compete with that at all. Mike Leach, I played for Mike at uh, Did Austin you really? State. Yeah. Did you I really? I didn't know he coached in Georgia. Yeah, he was at Austin State uh, as an assistant. Before yeah. he... Yeah. That's really cool. Anyway, he's an oddball. <laughs> the storyline for that the Texas Tech game, I didn't realize the circumstances he kind of left Texas Tech under. He punished a kid, kind of goofy, and his kid's daddy was an analyst on TV. Oh, uh, shit, yeah. He made him go sit in the hot building. Damn. 
Well, what's his name? Texas Texas coach was a player for Leach too, wasn't he? Uh, what's his name? Kingsport, he's gone. He's an Arizona Cardinals. Um, no, it was what's his name? He's now the the Louisiana Monroe coach. Uh, oh, uh, Texas Tech's current coach. I can't he, think of his name. He played for Leach apparently too. So, but yeah, I, I just don't know. I mean, put Leach up against people like Saban and Kiffin. All these other coaches. They just, they just don't care anything about defense. They yeah. don't care anything about the kicking game. Yeah. The it's special teams. That that it's Arkansas, good. damn that Arkansas game. We would have won if we hadn't missed like three field goals. I was so and mad. Mississippi State has had a good defense for a long, long time. I mean, it's all about scoring points on offense, fast. What you can't do in the SEC. I mean, it's just not possible. All I'm doing is knocking the weight out right now. Yeah, it's so thick. Come back in and give you a horse here. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I was really hoping the Georgia-Alabama <laughs> game was going to get the other way. Like I, I said, I grew up an Alabama fan, but, like, I don't know. Ever since I've become a Mississippi State fan, it's there's just so many bandwagon Alabama fans now. Oh, yeah. It's ridiculous. Well, Georgia couldn't beat Alabama twice, so now yeah. Georgia's really in the best situation they can be in. Yeah, They've had so many, like, big-time matchups in the past five years. And I think really with COVID being the way that it was, it actually turned out this year was better for football. So, because so many schedules got changed and people having to fill in gaps. I mean, it really was a good year for everybody playing good teams. I just don't see how Mississippi State can go from – winning against a ranked team one week to losing to Memphis the next. Like, it's just – our program's a joke some days. So. Well, that Memphis game had a lot of, like, bad, terrible calls, like, refereeing in it. I'm, I usually am, like, pretty, like, objective when we do terribly. And, like, I know, like, we're not a great team, but – like Yeah, but 20-point difference, like, that's, that's a pretty notable – So what's the spread on Georgia Michigan going to be? Seven. Georgia by seven. <laughs> Is Alabama going to decimate Cincinnati? <clears throat> Cincinnati, anybody can get up for one game. Uh, Cincinnati's going to play them on a motion, and they've got you know they got some players. You know, a couple turnovers would make a big difference. But yeah. the difference in that game, the people that don't understand football and. Is Alabama's gonna play about sixty players. Cincinnati's only gonna play about forty players. Yeah. So they'll beat them late. Because they'll have fresh bodies to come yeah. in. Two platoon and, and you know, you got all the best bodies in <laughs> Alabama. I mean they're recruited their their depth is ridiculous. That's that's, that's why, why I don't understand. I mean they they just have so many people. It's it's insane. And people that don't even play at all. And you'll like, see Saban, he man, he really steps up and coaches at this level, he'll step yeah. in front of, front of an OC or a defense coordinator in a heartbeat. And yeah. Just micromanage everything. But I mean, that's just what, what makes this program the way it does. So, why well, he has so many people coming out of it, you know, being coaches, head coaches, places. So. Playing on emotion and playing on tradition. Like these players that Alabama's got, their yeah. alumni will scrutinize them the rest of their life Yeah, of what happens tonight, you know what I mean? I can't believe Jimbo Fisher finally beat Saban. Man, he <laughs> opted out of their bowl game because they didn't want to get beat by Wake Forest. <laughs> yeah, they, they claimed it was COVID, but they yeah. just didn't want to get beat. Wake Forest is tough. I think that's who plays. I think Wake Forest and Rutgers. I think. The Gator yeah, Bowl Rutgers, today? Yeah. I think it kicks off at like 11 this morning. Right, Wake Forest? Purdue and Tennessee, though, what was the final game. score of that? 48-45. They went, was it overtime. single overtime? Yeah, Tennessee really got screwed, though. Because it was 31-30 uh, to 30 when I saw it at Tennessee. The last minute and a half of that game, they both scored twice apiece. <laughs> within, like, one went 80 yards, the next one 70 yards. The next one went 85 yards, the next one went 67 Jesus, yards. So it was just back and forth. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, it was just <laughs> no ridiculous. De- no defense whatsoever. None. And... Tennessee 
they, they stopped him down there, but he wasn't on the ground, and he reached out over the line, and then you can hear the whistle after. Uh, Good pause after. And they said, oh, his momentum was stopped. So then all they had to do was just go in there and kick a field goal. And that kid was three for three already. So yeah, it was, hey, it was, yeah, they got screwed. They really did. I mean, um, if, you, if it's in, when in doubt, you go ahead and give it to them. The other team's still got a chance. Yeah. And you let them, you know, they would have played out. Could have been three or four overtimes, but they just, the officials crapped out on that. See, but, if it were the, an Alabama fan having this conversation right now, it would be a completely different story. I mean, Tennessee deserved everything. The targeting calls, like, now are just ridiculous, too. Like, it, yeah, I mean, it's a little bit micromanaged. Like, I understand they need to keep players safe, but at some point you got to let them play it out. Well, when it's, like, when it's obvious, that's fine. But, like, all these little minute things holding up the game and just – I, I don't know. I I feel like it is getting a lot like the NFL and just like where it's actually worse because they scrutinize so much. I mean, I saw they were gonna start like penalizing like a te- like if you pretend to slide and like go down. Seriously? But just pick up You're more yards. You're gonna see people start getting penalized for faking injuries, and so they don't have to burn timeouts too. That happened a bunch this year. Oh yeah, Mississippi State did that a couple times. When, see, uh, I must be oblivious to that because I don't. Texas Tech was running the hurry up. And oh, it's all about momentum. They yeah. slide that momentum in a little. Get them tired. That's what kills Mississippi State is like if we don't get on the rhythm, especially with Will Rogers and his receivers. I mean, and he's got you know we've got two good guys, but if he just doesn't get in that flow, it, it's just not happening. And he'll get in it for a few few plays. Yes, on the field, and then just cannot make a completion on fourth down, and it just kills us. Or third down, and he, dude, he like the grass is not always greener on the other side. See, Mississippi State's. I think they gave up on him too fast in Florida. <laughs> he like he could have stayed at State for twenty more years. Yeah, he could be mediocre at Mississippi State. You know, have a bowl season and be completely fine with your job, but. He's too good of a coach to just be happy with that. But yeah. they gave up on him too fast. He won the Orange Bowl, what, two years ago? Like, well, he... That Kyle Trask kid, man, turned him into something. He was just a backup. Yeah. And he just didn't have a quarterback this well, year. That was I mean, I mean look at what Dak yeah, did with Dak. I mean, he's you know. a... Look what he did with Alex Smith in Utah. Yeah. He was his OC. Look what he did with, you know, Leak and, and Tebow at... Florida. Yeah, Florida. He was, he was OC there. I really want to see the Cowboys in the Super Bowl this year. Just so Dak can get one. Yeah, you know, he fought for that contract extension and, and that huge payday, but like I I hope him the Cowboys his, don't win one until Jerry Jones is gone. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he he could have had so many with Jimmy Johnson and he screwed it up. Yeah. And he's that's why he's been so awful ever since. Yeah. Well, I mean, people have said that about basically um, with Sean Payton and the Saints too. And Saints get well. When Payton got in trouble that time, that back up, I'm gonna blow this everywhere. So oh, sorry. Payton got in trouble. That's what hurt the Saints. That yeah. slowed their momentum there for a couple of years. But he had it. He had it going on there until they got caught. What, they stealing signals or something? Something like that. They were doing something like the Patriots were doing it, too. It was, it was them and a few other people, too, wasn't it? Or a few other teams? Oh, I'm sure they all did. Yeah. They got to. years with baseball. Yeah. I'm not done yet. That was, kind of that was Astros that got in trouble a few years ago for doing the same thing, right? Mississippi State finally won a baseball national championship this past year. Which is something we can hold on to for a little while, at least. At least they got a good baseball team. Yeah, it's a great program. I mean, it's it's fun to go to. So the but, following for baseball at state is a lot. Like, I mean, football is great too. Like, you'll get sixty thousand people in the stadium, but before they built that new left field lounge and circle, like, baseball was just a kids can sit up and just get hammered. Good yeah. old boys party. I mean, it was just like. We, would have we had to, a left field lounge, and it was just like the most rickety little. Like fraternities would have, they would have parades <laughs> where their fraternities would bring their trailers, like, and haul them into the left field lounge and leave them there the whole season, and they would just like sit on the top with the barbecue and grill and get drunk and watch the football. Yeah, game. looking back on that's proper dangerous, but eh, it is what it is. That's college. Yeah, but it's all going away. You can't find it anymore. 
They don't have any of that for. They took that away from the fans. So they, they built, built it. They, they built, built like it out. They built like condos out in left oh, oh. And now it's like yeah. thousands of dollars to rent to, the condos, and those like frat boys can't afford that. So they've got like lower That's levels. So stupid. Yeah, like lower level of seating. Yeah. It's it's like open air seating that you can basically like a booth you can rent essentially, and you basically pay like you know like football tickets, you know, pay your season ticket seats or whatever, but it's not the same. I haven't been back since they've since they've updated that. So I think I want to say my last year in school. Your baseball stadium needs to be off campus. Yeah. Serious. Any any college baseball stadium needs to be off campus that way, and it needs to be out somewhere where you can. That's where Alabama's they is. They want to do what they want to do. Yeah. It's kind of off campus. You want to make money? Just catch them driving when they leave. <laughs> <laughs> Fill up the gel that way too. Well, that's <laughs> that's what's crazy to me about Mississippi State, like, cause, cause Ottawa County is dry, Starkville is wet, and then campus is is dry. So it's like, well, campus, you know, they gotta have it dry. Yeah. They never let that fly. Now they just started selling yeah, alcohol like two years ago. So yeah, in the stadium, in the like stadium. that was a game changer. I think they're still kind of dry. So. The frat houses can have alcohol, right? No. Are they can't. supposed to? No, I didn't realize that. Your office would be dry. We didn't hear that rule in school. We didn't either, but IFC said it had to be that way. The best thing about living in New Orleans for a little while is you get so used to just being able to really drive up anywhere and get a drink, and then you come back and we we'll try to go up more apartment and they're like, can't take that outside, sir. It's like, sure. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. All this sponsorship stuff right now with college, I, there's no doubt that they deserve these sponsorships and be able to do this, but I, I don't know. I just... That seems a little bit superficial to me. Yeah. Takes away the purity of college sports. Yeah. And two, it's not like the NFL and you're you're doing it professionally and there are gonna be kids that completely miss out on, you know, opportunities because they're not Oh, here's the top quality or whatever. If you, uh, the transfer portal's gonna ruin it. If you wanna graduate from college, you got a chance to get a full scholarship. Yeah. Earn it. Yeah. All right, if you, if you wanna, you know, you get all these free clothes and shoes and you get fed like you would believe. I played college football, so. Uh, oh, we catered for the football team, so. Did Leach coach your college team or your high school team? College. Okay. Assistant coach. Head coach was Hal Mummy. Hal Mummy took the Tim Couch job at Kentucky back in the day. Okay. They got the number one quarterback. Kentucky's had to come up in football in the past couple of years. They, I mean, they're not a give me win anymore. Stoops has done a good job up there. I just recently. There were several years there that they, I mean. I used to call them Kentucky, but I can't really do that anymore. <laughs> well, Mississippi State. You know that they had, they had Bear Bryant up there and Adolph Rupp. At the same time, really? right? At the same time. <laughs> that was the, the pinnacle Bryant of sports. Won the SEC. He won the SEC, and he got a gold watch. Adolf Rupp won it, and he got a car. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, Bear Bryant saw the writing on the wall. He left. And went to Kentucky's State. always going to be a basketball school. Mississippi State's got a tradition, and whenever they beat Kentucky in basketball, they hang a black wreath on the, the visitor locker room door. I don't know where it started, but it's been going on for, like, since the 40s or something, so... One of the guys that was in the Final Four at Mississippi State, he's from my hometown. And, uh, you know, that's, he lives at Glory Day because we've never been back since <laughs> then. I don't think so, we've I mean, been. I don't. That State hardly ever beats Kentucky anymore, so we don't have to worry about that. Oh, uh, Andy Kennedy went from Ole Miss to UAB. I think he's coaching over at UAB now, but he was a pretty good basketball coach. Is it UAB? Yeah. UAB's really got to come up, too. I mean, why don't you get your horseshoe? 
there. I put a little wax in it, but you don't put your hat back on. Yeah. You want to look at it? Uh, yeah. Well, it is what it is. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate that.